you have your Bibles and care to follow along, our reading will be Luke chapter 12, verses 13 through 21. Luke chapter 12, verses 13 through 21. And one of the company said unto him, Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. And he said unto him, Man, who made me a judge or a divider over you? And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. Yeah. There's too many S's in that word. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentiful. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, because I have no room where to bestow my fruits? And he said, this will, this will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there with will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who sh shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasures for himself, and is not rich towards God. Now we'll go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Good morning. Morning. I do want to stand by and say, like, this lesson kind of has to do with kind of what Paul was saying this morning. Was, hey, look, I'm rubbing off. The time of my lesson is three wooden crosses, leaving legacies. And we all heard the song by Randy Travis. It's one of his hit songs, The Three Wooden Crosses. In the song, it teaches that it's not what, it what you take when you leave this world behind you, but it's what you leave behind you when you go. This is a very true statement. Because, as our reading said, even though we lay up treasures here on earth, what's it going to benefit us when we can't use them anymore? When our bodies lie cold in the ground? Job chapter 1, verses 21. Job chapter 1, verse 21. And said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord giveth and taketh away. As well as the saying, Naked did I come out of my mother's womb, naked shall I return to the earth. We didn't have anything when we were born. We didn't even know what possessions were. So what's it going to do us when we leave this world? We have we can't use those up in heaven. Those stay here. They're man-made. They're not God-made. This world is not permanent. So let's do something about it. If you die tomorrow, what could you say you did with your life? Think of the song, Three Wooden Crosses. It talks about how a, a farmer, a teacher, a preacher, and a hooker were on this bus going down to Mexico. The bus gets in a wreck with a semi. Almost all of them die except for the hooker. The teacher left her knowledge, her wisdom, in the minds of all the children that she touched. She tried to make them smarter to make this world a better place. The farmer left plenty of land, the knowledge of how to work that land in his son's brain, in his heart, and the love of growing things in his son's heart. 
left that legacy. The preacher gave his Bible to the hooker before he died. And in turn, that hooker had a son who then in turn became a preacher. So if you die tomorrow, what are you going to say that you left to change the world towards Christ? Did you let your Christian light shine? Did you teach someone a little bit about the Lord? Did you help pay for others' groceries or donate to the hungry, the widowed, the sick? Matthew 19, 16 through 24. Matthew chapter 19, verses 16 through 24. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. He said unto him, Which, which, Jesus said, that Thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And the young man said unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor. And thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful. And he had great possessions, for he had great possessions. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Jesus tells the young rich ruler here to sell all he has and give to the poor. We cannot buy our ways and way into heaven. God has no need for any of our earthly possessions. Why would he need that when he he can just make it on his own if he needed it? He made us. He made everything in this world. He inspired men to create things. He tells us this in this verse because we don't need earthly wealth. For it even says, we have many mansions laid up for us in heaven. John 14 and 2. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. So wealth has nothing for us in heaven. And wealth has nothing really for us here other than earthly pleasures and able to get around in a world ruled by man. All these earthly things that we have, my beautiful truck out there, my house, my property, my birds, all can be destroyed in a flash, in a blink of an eye. All of it's fleeting. But treasures in the Lord are everlasting. Matthew 6, 19 through 20. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust nor corruption And where where thieves do not break through nor steal. We'll go ahead and read the 21st verse too. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The question is, 
How do we lay up treasures in heaven? First, we become a servant of the Lord by taking the steps. And I'm going to go ahead and say the final step right here because it is one of the more important ones, though the other ones lead up to it. Mark 16 and 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Now, I'm not talking about sprinkling water on your head or just dunking just your head. But as Jesus had commanded us to be baptized, Mark 10 and 39. And they said unto him, We can. And Jesus said unto them, Ye shall indeed drink of the cup that I drink of, and with the baptism that I am baptized with all shall ye be baptized. He fully submerged himself, showing, burying the old man. Matthew three thirteen through 17. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. <clears throat> but John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? And Jesus answered, saying unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him, and Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were open unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descend like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. After taking the steps and being baptized, it's only the start of us making our Christian legacies. Now, you just have to touch lives around you with your Christian light. Ephesians 6, 5-8. Ephesians 6, verses 5 through 8. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, in, sight, in singleness of your heart, as unto Christ. Not with eye service as me, man, men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. With good will doing service as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doth, the same shall be received of the Lord, where, whether he be bond or free. This is talking about doing good for the Lord by helping others. It doesn't matter how bad they treated you but by helping others for all good deeds show the light of the Lord especially for us as Christians we're also to do this in the name of Jesus And to do so, we show them with our Christian virtues and show them openly. Colossians 3, 12 through 17. Colossians chapter 3, oh, I'm on 4, that's why it looked funny. Verses 12 through 17. Put on, therefore, as the elect God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, 
forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man had a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfect perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the world of Christ dwell in you richly. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and abomin and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. And whosoever ye do, or whatsoever ye do it in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. The virtues are mercy, kindness, being humble, meekness, long-suffering, forgiveness, and charity. I have done a, a small series over these. Um, these things all being challenging to us because we're humans. And humans, much like myself, and I am really stepping on my toes with this part, are stubborn, selfish, proud, holding grudges, unwilling to forgive. But you know what? We are all also hardwired for charity. Charity is love. We need to be the people that when we don't get a chance to help, or we feel like we can't help. Be in pain with those that are that need the help. <clears throat> to have empathy towards those that we're not able to help with, but we can try by giving our love, our kindness, a helping hand to. Quoting another song by another great country artist, Alan Jackson. He said it best when he sang the verse, Faith, hope, and love are some good things he gave us, but the greatest is love. In the song that he sang, Where Were You When the World Stopped Turning? Charity helps us grow as Christians and as people. 2 Peter 1, 5 through 8. Second Peter chapter 1, verses 5 through 8. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For these things be in you, and abound, and abound, that make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. We grow by helping others, by building up the charity inside of us. Because other things can squash that real bad. People can say words that cut hearts. Take the story of Moses and the Pharaoh. Moses tried to beg to let his people out, and his heart kept getting hardened against Moses. Also to help us grow, to help us be able to present ourselves and know what we're talking about when we're trying to teach, is we have to study. 2 Timothy 2 and 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, as young people growing in faith, it's easier to have it shaken. 
some debi- some deny being Christians to look cool or to fit in with their worldly friends in school. But it's not good to do so. Second Timothy two and fifteen. Or Second Timothy two and twelve, sorry. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. Yes, it's going to be hard as Christians out there. There are so many people out there that are against us. Against what we believe in. They either don't believe or just think that we do it wrong. But if we muscle through it, we'll make it to our home in heaven. If we fall, we deny him, we deny our own Christianity. And he, on that judgment day, will deny us. Matthew 10, 32-33. Whosoever, there whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. We need to be strong. And the Lord gives us strength. Philippians 4 and 13. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. A church is one body. Though there are many parts, we are one body. The Lord gives us strength. It's not like he comes down and touches us on our nose. He says, hey, you're now as strong as Samson. But he gives us strength. He gives us patience through study of our Bible, a tool that he gave us, and the community in the church that he gave us. When one struggles, two can succeed. We stand by each other. When we're struggling, we come and ask for prayers of the church because many prayers make a louder noise than a single one. Though the Lord is listening to every single prayer. <clears throat> and with the strength he gives us and to help instill a legacy of Christianity and Christianly and brotherly love, we need to be doers of the word. James 1, 22 through 27. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any man be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man, beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But also, but whoso looketh in the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word, this man shall be blessed in his deed. If any man among you seems to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction, and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Yes, we're going to be made fun of, scorned, abused. But in the end, it doesn't matter what man does to us. We shouldn't fear for what they can do to this body. Because if we're being true Christians, hard Christians, this body is only temporary. 
Our home is in heaven with hopefully all of our loved ones and the good Lord and the angels. Psalms 56 and 4. In God I will praise his word. In God I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. Hebrews 13 and 6. So that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Matthew 10 and 28. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. We shouldn't be fearing what others can do to us here on earth. We should fear though the ones that can destroy our souls. Jesus gave a parable to teach us to be kind to others. Luke ten, twenty five through thirty seven. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answered, saying, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. But he, willing to justify himself, said unto Jesus, And who is my neighbor? And Jesus answered, said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed by the, on the other side. And likewise a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came, where he said, uh, where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him. He went to him and bound up his wound, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence, and gave them to the host, and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spend more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now these three thinkest thou was the neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, He that showed mercy on him. Then said Jesus unto him, Go and do thou likewise. We need to be like the Samaritan. And showing mercy to those when they need help. When they're down. Matthew 5 and 7. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. 1 Timothy 1 and 16. Howbeit for this cause I obtain mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering. For a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to, everla to life everlasting. We need to be generous. Matthew 25, 34 through 46. Matthew chapter 25, verse 34 through 46. 
Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you for the foundation of the world. For I was a, an hunger, and ye gave me meat. I was a thirst, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye come unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee an hungered, and fed thee, or, th a thir or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? When saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer, and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was and hungered, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee unhungered, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the, the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into everlasting life. And we need to constantly keep showing our faith. Hebrews 11 and 6. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. These are the things that make us good Christians, especially if we show it. And not show it like I'm better than you, but show it like you can come to me for help, and I will help you in the ways that I can. We don't need to be prideful of our status, but we do need to be able to let them know that if someone is hurting, someone needs help, a shoulder to cry on, an ear to hear, a mind to help think through a problem, Maybe someone has a hole in the floor of their house and they need help fixing it, but they can't physically do it. Someone who's willing to come help in these things. We shouldn't do it just to be seen, but to help, to show others that they can be helped through us. We need to be tools of the Lord. Matthew 23, verses 1 through 5. Then spake Jesus to the multitudes and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore, whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do, but do not eat after their works, for they say and do not. For they bid heavy burdens, for they bind heavy burdens and, and grievous to be borne, and laying them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. But all their works they do for it to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments. We don't need to be like the Pharisees. We don't need to be doing this to be seen. Or just to be seen. We don't need to be Christians to lay heavy weights on those who want to become Christians. But to help them. Hold their hand. It is a heavy weight to be a Christian because, against, again, most of the world's against you. 
but it's not so heavy when you have brothers and sisters right there next to you, helping you every step of the way. Being a doer means also we need to obey our elders, love our enemies, and give all for the Lord. I think there's two things people in the Church of Christ should show every day. Our Christianly virtues and a big smile. For we should be happy to work in the Lord. We should be happy to let our light shine. We shouldn't be embarrassed of it. We shouldn't want to try to hide it away. People at my work wonder why I'm always smiling when they come in. I'm at work hours before the rest of them get there. Because I'm the dude who cuts the meat. They're always wondering why I'm always in a good mood. It's a beautiful day. The Lord blessed me with that's all I ever say. Now I try to make sure that my smile is on daily for them. First Peter three and fourteen. Chapter three, First Peter chapter three verse fourteen. But, but and if ye suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, neither by trouble, neither be troubled. Go ahead and read the fifteenth verse too. But sanctify the Lord in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. We, as Christians, we need to be happy serving the Lord and find pleasure in that and not in worldly things. For their joy, enjoyment's only going to be brief. Second Timothy two sixteen through twenty two. Second Timothy chapter two, verses sixteen through twenty two. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness, and their word will ye eat as doth a canker, of whom is Hymenus and Philetus, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the rest saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Having this, this seal, the Lord know, knoweth them that are his, and let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these... He shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and, and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Flee also youthful, youthful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace, with them that call on the Lord out of the pure heart. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid knowing that they do, do generate, uh, do gender strifes. Yeah. There's tempty, shiny new things, new cars, technology, football, games, fishing, golf. I know we're a couple months out from hunting season. Yes, these are pleasing. But they're only for a short while and soon gone. Heaven is, in, heaven is eternal. If you want to start your legacy of letting your light shine, first you need to hear the word, in which today I've presented a little bit of it, Romans 10 and 14. 
How then shall they call on him of whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Then we're to have faith, Romans 10 and 17. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Then we repent of our sins, Acts 2 and 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Confess Christ before men. Romans 10, 9 through 10. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth, and unto righteous, uh, believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And lastly, as I said, stated earlier, is to be baptized. Mark 16, 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. It never stops with these steps, though. As I stated before, baptism and following the steps is just the start. After that, we have to be doers, letting our light shine, constantly studying, and if you have questions, asking elders and helping those who need help. After those first steps, that's just the starting line to working our way up through those pearly gates. Never stop working for the Lord. Never stop studying. Be strong. And when you feel weak, lean on those in your community, in your Christian community. Again, we are one body. Have faith. Love one another. Be kind to those who mistreat you. And never give in to Satan's temptations. Because Jesus never did. Hebrews 2 and 18. For in that he himself hath suffered being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. The Lord is there to help us when we're tempted with other things. Whether it be by sending a brother and sister there to help set us straight or whatnot. I know right now I'm in the market of trying to get stuff together to get my food trailer. and I'll send pictures off to uh, our Facebook uh ads to my mom and my wife and they'll look it over and like hey this person seems a little sketchy or hey this doesn't ha fully have what you want and they're keeping me in check because I really want to get it started faster now but it's good to have others there to keep you in check whether it be Christian life personal life or whatnot. this is all I have if you want to follow the steps that were stated become a child of God or need prayers of the church, please come forward as we say and sing the song that has been selected. Before I go ahead and step off here and turn it officially over to the other brother to get to the part that we are here also other than to learn of the Lord, but to do that which is commanded of us for the first Sunday, or for first day of the week. Um, I'd like to leave you with this last verse, Ephesians 5 and 20. Give thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. For it's through God that we live to help others. Through God, we have all these things, like our video games, our cars, fishing poles, guns. So, through all things, give thanks. I'll turn it over to the other brother. Paul, I still have a bottle. <laughs>